Thank you. Like, hey guys, so my name is Bence, or just call me Ben. And yay, it was working a moment ago. Okay, never mind. Okay, so this is the agenda we're gonna go through. So first, I'm gonna just do a quick intro. Like, uh, quickly, I'm gonna introduce myself in structure. We're gonna see what's A11Y. This is actually pretty important to we'll see why. Uh, we're gonna write a simple, a really, really simple UI test, and then we're gonna play with accessibility checks and and see what actually Google offers you and like how you can kind of turn your uh, UI test to also test accessibility. We're gonna go through all the checks and gonna give us more conclusion and we can have a few questions. So I'm an Android developer. I think you guys guessed that. So I got more than six years experience. So I just joined Instruction in February. That's because I basically moved to Hungary to Budapest in like February. And all the apps I've worked on basically were UI related. So that means you download the JSONs and do some parsing and show a lot of UIs. And obviously I'm my, my uh, all the apps have bugs. So this is a bug. So it's really, really scary. <laughs> so it's a good way. So we need to find some ways to catch them, basically. And that's why testing could be a good tool. So uh, Instructure is basically an ad-tech ad tech company. They have a learning management system called Canvas. It's really, really common in US. And also, it's a smaller one, an employee development system, which is Bridge. That's why I actually work on. So uh, the motto is the first day of school to the last day of work. Uh, and we love open source. So basically Canvas is fully open source. Like you can check out the code bridge, not yet. It might in the future. So as I said, we have a new office in Budapest. We're go going pretty quick. So some uh, important stuff about Instructure is that automation is mandatory. Like we need to automate. So all our products has to be accessible. There is no question about it. So uh, we are using the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, VCHG, and the AAA standards. So this is more like for web, but mobile doesn't differentiate that much, actually. So Google is uh, a bit stricter in uh, some points and like a bit less strict on others. But it's uh, basically almost the same. So about Bridge Mobile. So it's an employee development system. Mobile started in February, so we basically got a green freight project that we are actually working on. So the Android is in Kotlin and the iOS is in Swift. It's pretty cool, so we have to write uh, lots of unit tests, 90% coverage, and we also write UI tests. And for accessibility, we need to support large fonts, uh, high contrast mode or basically have like a dark mode which is also like a high contrast mode obviously talkback and we have the AAA standards so we use Bitrise, Roboelectric, Espresso and virtual devices so Firebase Tesla why I'm actually saying this because these are actually pretty common like probably you guys already use Roboelectric and Espresso and like virtual devices so it's not something to us like everyone can do what I'm gonna show you and like it's not that hard so welcome I'm gonna talk about automated accessibility testing in practice or uh, accessibility and uh, espresso basically so what is A11Y so I was really waiting for this uh, slide finally because I didn't want to write every time accessibility down because it's like really hard so you have A11Y which is abbreviation and the point in it it's like between the A and the Y you have like 11 letters so and it's actually pronounced early so it's pretty nice it's really used uh, at least on so finally let's jump into it so let's uh, gonna build a UI test so we're gonna have this really really hard view so it has a text and like a button the the important part about the button is it's 44 dp high and 
and let's write a test. So, well, so we're basically gonna write uh, a test page. So with Espresso, you're gonna do some on view with ID. So we get a button, a text, and we get two functions, the asset initial state. So it basically checks if the view is completely uh, visible and check the text. And we are doing the same for the button. So we basically doing the same for button and text. And we have a function for perform click. So <laughs> with the magic of Kotlin, you could actually do something like that. So you can create some e extension functions and this makes it way more readable. And actually we have a library that's open source, you guys can use if you like. Uh, we basically have a tons of uh, extension functions for uh, Espresso. So now we gonna jump to the test. So we have the early uh, page test with a function called test idle. So we're gonna just load the fragment, do a click. That's gonna be really important for uh, accessibility later and just do an assert the initial state that we already wrote. So the important part here, we have our base page where we are making all, uh, so that's where we are building all the pages. So you can see the A11 Y page is coming from somewhere. This is generated in the base page. The, the uh, great about that, like you can actually do UI test with multiple uh, pages. So for example, if a button would be actually clickable, we could go to the next page, do some assertion there, come back, do some assertion here, or like move forward, because all the pages will be available to me in like every test I build. So it's pretty cool. So we run the test and yes, it's working. So we are pretty happy. Okay, so now we're gonna turn on Ali and see what's gonna happen. So it's actually really, really easy. So we have in your uh, base page test, you just need to ask uh, these few lines of code. So it's a, um, basically you are using the before class and you just call enable on accessibility checks. Which uh, uh, another good thing to do is to set run checks from root view to true. That's gonna actually trigger accessibility text, uh, text not from the view that uh, you had the interaction, but from the root actually. So it's gonna go up, like I'm done, and like it's gonna check everything. So it's a pretty good thing to turn it on. So yeah, uh, seal actually approves it. So we are good. Okay, so let's play around a bit and what's gonna happen. So now that we enabled it, let's run the same test again and see what's happening. So you're gonna get in Locker this unreadable error actually. It's, yeah, it's really, really hard to see. But the important part is it's saying that the minimum touch target's uh, size is 48 by 48 and the actual size is 379 and 44 dp. So that's actually breaking the contract. So you should probably fix it. So what does it mean? So the recommended size is 48 by 48. And we did less. Actually, the AAA standard is 44 by 44, which is actually a CSS pixel. So might vary a bit, but still, like Google actually is harder on this point. So yeah, so your <laughs> designers won't be necessarily happy about these changes. Not always easy to add uh, this many padding on a button, actually. So don't panic. Actually, if this happens, like don't panic. You don't have to solve everything like just instantly. You can. Uh, there are gonna be a few ways. So try your best way to fix it. And if you can't, like I'm gonna show you how to ignore it later. So with third parties, actually not everything is accessible. So try to avoid using third party libraries. And I'm gonna show you three, uh, two screens. So this has some accessibility issues. Actually, I'm pretty sure these are pretty common. Like you guys already saw them. Any idea what, wow, what could be the issue? So. These items are not uh, 48 by 48. 
So if you run the checks, it's actually going to uh, fail. So for the overflow button, uh, for bridge, we decided not to use it. So that's, that's a way. And um, the company, structure-wise, we are trying to get rid of the overflow button. For the dialogue itself, actually, we check with our uh, accessibility team. And they said it's actually OK for now, like we can use it. Because it's better to have something that the user know, because this is like common, it's like a Android thing. So it's better to have something that the user know, that having something maybe more accessible, but like uh, a different um, user experience. So, so for now, we are uh, keeping this. And we're going to hope uh, Google will fix that soon. Like uh, with the latest uh, Matera design, the items are actually uh, larger. So in case you want to ignore um, some uh, errors, this is how you can do it. So you can uh, set surplus uh, result matcher, and you have to do a matches thingy here. Actually, what we are doing, OK. okay never mind. So what we were actually doing is we were hiding, uh, ignoring the overflow issue. So let's move to the next part. Let's test with TalkBack a bit. So what's changed, actually? So now I basically changed the button to have an image button. So it's a really small change. Now it sets the height and width to 4848. So that's going to actually work. So and let's run the test and see what happens. So we're going to have, over time, a unreadable error in like LogCat. But the, the interesting part is the saying that the view is missing speakable text needed for the screen reader. So what does that actually mean? So what's a speakable text? Text. So that's actually so either a content description or text. So in this order. So if you set a content description, it's going to ignore the text and it's going to read the content description. But if you didn't set one, it's going to try to read the text. <coughs> So that's pretty important. So you might have views that actually have states. So for example, a play pause button, right? So it's the same image button that's either in play or like pause state. So in that case, if you set the content description, what it's going to read? So the good idea here is to basically dynamically set the content description. So if it's in play state, set to play. And this is how you can actually check it. So you have two ways. So either you do the text check matches with content description, and you check the content description. Or the other way, which I actually prefer, is do a on view with content description. So you are actually finding the view with the content description. and. Basically, you just need to check if it's visible. So I actually prefer the second way. So let's have some examples. So this page is actually from page. So what uh, you can see is that we have items in a recycle view. It's a simple recycle view, even though it's like uh, you can <laughs> collapse items. It's just a simple recycle view. So all the headers are collapsible, but these are just like simple items. So if we wouldn't add a content description to the item, it would just read shared agenda so the fir for the first one. But that's actually not enough. You need to specify the state. So with content description, you have to say like shared agenda expanded, for example, or like shared agenda collapsed. So this is something you actually need to set yourself. So and also, you need to test it. So these are the two ways, basically, to test it. I will still go with the second one. It's um, a way better way. So it's not that hard. OK, let's move to the third uh, part. Let's uh, play a bit with like contrast ratio and see what's actually going to happen. So as you can see, we still have uh, a button. Well, now uh, the text color is basically gray, and the background is also gray. So the button text is invisible, basically. So let's 
basically run the same test that we already built and see what's gonna happen now. So yay, so we got our error again, which is saying that the text view does not have a required contrast of three uh, and the actual contrast is one. So something is actually wrong. So it's pretty pretty cool. So I don't know if you guys realize, but we got all this stuff with one single line of code. Like it's pretty awesome. So you are just writing UI test and you get all this stuff for free. So it's pretty cool. But actually here we kind of have some limitations. So it's only test with actual views background. So that means it's not gonna check the background of the panels. So if you didn't edit the background, I think we happen. And it's only te uh, test for color driver boss, at least for now. So maybe later they're gonna get a better implementation. So what does it mean that in these two cases, it's uh, the test actually passes. So in the uh, first case, we are not using color drawable as the button background. Basically, we're just using the button type, so we didn't add any background color or background. So yeah, it passes. And in the second case, you can see that we don't have a text. So that's basically we have a white text with no background. The background is coming from the panels, so it's invisible. So that's something uh, this test doesn't actually check. Whew. So that was a lot, probably. So, but hang with me, like we're gonna just go through all the checks actually that um, uh, Google basically provides you. So we already talked about the touch target size we, uh, and the speakable text uh, present check and the text, uh, text contrast check as well. So we have something called duplicate speakable text check uh, this one actually checks if in a uh, so if your views has two uh, focusable items which is the same text. So for example, you have a label called A, and then the button has the same readable text like A. In that case, this can be confusing to the user, which is actually the clickable part. So that's so yeah, uh, that's that's a good thing that it checks it. So we have an editable contest, uh, content description check. So editable content doesn't require a content description because just like as I said, like if we are the content description, basically uh, that's what uh, talkback will read. But here it's really, really important that like we want to know what's the input text. So don't ever do that. And that's why we have this awesome check. Uh, we have the clickable span checks, so it's checking for URL spans and clickable spans. So the problem with it is that Accessit doesn't handle it well, and usually spans are not 40 by 48 either. So it's it's a good idea to avoid spans. Uh, okay, so we have a rather than content uh, description checks check. So it's only checks in English, and usually. It uh, and basically it just checks uh, if your content description have the word button. But the point is that if something is clickable, it's basically considered as a button. What does it mean that it knows the type? So when you say, uh, so you say it's, um, I don't know, like you that start as the, the button. So you have a start button, for example, or like a play button. If you would add in the content description like play button, it would read like play button button. So that's something you, you don't want to do. It knows the type, it knows it's clickable, don't force it. Okay, so we have an image, image contrast check. So this is pretty new, it's like added with the uh, 3.0. Uh, yeah, 3 um, and it basically checks if the foregrounds versus the backgrounds are uh, visible. We have uh, something called class name checks. So it's basically check if the get accessibility class name is supported by uh, early service. So, and we have a uh, transfer order check, which I'm not entirely sure. It's something you won't necessarily get. Okay, so 
Whew. Okay, so the take back here is like you should. Uh, so actually, it's a pretty good idea to use page object when you are writing test. It's like uh, it's really really easy. It's simple. Like it makes all your UI test actually way more flexible. So I would totally go with it. Enable accessibility checks. Like seriously, it's like really really easy. Like it's just a few lines of code. So uh, it runs on UI test. So if you don't write UI test, this is not something that's uh, gonna help you. And it needs interaction. So you need to either press a button or like do some interaction, do some scrolling to trigger the accessibility checks. So by just showing the view, it's not gonna trigger. So do some interaction on it. But while you are doing UI test, that's gonna happen. So unlike with a small, a few small modification. Like basically have like uh, uh, UI tests that are uh, uh, great for accessibility checks as well. Try to run it on multiple devices, like multiple Android versions. Like yeah, so for example, on older devices you might find some some uh, interesting bugs. So but yeah, these checks actually have some limitations. It's not always nice. Uh, also, don't panic. Like seriously, you don't have to solve everything by one. Like take your time. It's all so if you do but step by step, is is already like better than not like, doing anything. So don't don't try to do everything in once. So for Espresso, all the code is basically available to you. Check it, and also because of the limitations, do some manual testing. Like seriously. Uh, it's not that hard like uh, start talkback and play with it like check your app actually first it's gonna be gonna be uh, yeah a bit weird so the first time I had to enable talkback and remember like the first question was how do I turn it off and this is actually the point <laughs> this is actually the point in it like it's not easy to use and like if your app is not accessible it's gonna make even harder for people who doesn't have any other choices. So yes, do it. Okay, for a fun fact, we have um, this screen coming from our app actually. So this is like a learnable item. Uh, it has some text on it. And the important part is like the 6M remaining. So actually, this one reads six meters remaining and not minutes. That's why actually you should do uh, manual testing as well. And like one last thing, why I was preparing for this uh, presentation, I found this awesome quote, so I want to say it. Like the hardest part of adding accessibility support uh, to your Android application is just remembering to do it. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, Yes, have any questions? I have two questions, please. Hi, last one. I saw in these samples that all the content descriptions were in English. Do you, in production, check for like localized content descriptions? Um, no. <laughs> we don't actually, like, we are checking if the translations are uh, fine. So if everything is translated, that's something like we check with Lint, for example. But as you could see, not all the checks works in other languages than English. So yeah, we are only checking for English for now. And the main, so we are u so the main users are in uh, US actually. So we are, uh, other languages are a bit limited. Um, other than that, like we translated bridge to like. 16 languages or something so yeah still we are trying no thank you anything else cool in that case thank you very much